Say, Bess, have you noticed how smoothly the old car is running these days? I certainly have. How much did it cost to have it overhauled this time? <laughs> That's one on you, honey. Overhauled nothing. I've discovered that our car is mighty particular about its diet. That's why I've changed to Rio Grande Crack Gasoline. Boy, does that old motor hum now. Rio Grande Crack Gasoline? Isn't that the gas the police cars use? It sure is. You know, I was talking to Officer Miller the other day. He was telling me that since our police department has been using Rio Grande Crack Gasoline, they can get their cars to the scene of an emergency in two minutes, 30 seconds on the average. Think of that. Some speed and some pickup, I'd say. Say, what time is it? We mustn't miss calling all cars. Calling All Cars, the copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Calling All Cars, attention All Cars, San Francisco Police calling All Cars. Attention broadcast 141, investigate Chinese market, 1917 C Street. That is all. From large cities like Los Angeles and Oakland, from large counties like Maricopa in Arizona, from enthusiastic reports testifying that police cars, sheriff's cars, fire engines, and emergency equipment of all kinds are getting better performance with Rio Grande cracked gasoline than ever before. City after city, county after county, have changed their gasoline purchasing specifications to read Rio Grande cracked gasoline exclusively. When are you, Mr. Motorist, going to change to the one outstanding brand of gasoline that is chosen for more emergency cars wherever it is sold than any other brand? Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline offers you police car performance in your own car. It is our pleasure tonight to introduce Chief Sabin Kane of San Rafael. Chief Kane. Good evening. Every once in a while... We run into a case that at first looks like nothing more than a routine job of investigation and suddenly develops into something big. The case you will hear tonight was one of those. There was nothing definite to work on, no reason to believe that as a result of it, one of the biggest dope peddling establishments in the state of California would be discovered. It was a hunch that put us on the right track. One of those hunches that are so strong you can't ignore them. Later in the story, you will see how right it was. Uh, right now, I should like to say that without the complete cooperation we received from the state narcotic officers who worked with me from the very beginning, this case might have turned out quite differently. The prompt and efficient response I received from them in answer to my call proved of invaluable assistance in apprehending the criminal. <laughs> Early one morning in February 1935, Chief Kane of the San Rafael Police Department has just entered his office and is thumbing through his mail when the sergeant on duty enters the room, a look of perplexity on his face. Good morning, Sergeant. What's up? I'm glad you're here, Chief. I've been hoping you'd show up for the last three hours. Well, what's the matter? Well, I don't exactly know, Chief. Maybe nothing. But there's four fellas out there waiting to see you, and so far I haven't been able to make any sense out of a thing they say. All right, Sergeant. Send them in. We'll see what we can do. Yes, sir. All right, you can come in. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you. All right, right. Oh, yeah, oh, We've been watching, and we know it's wrong. Oh, come in, gentlemen, come in. Uh, it's wrong. We've been watching, and we know it's wrong. Yes, okay. every night at the same time it happens. We've been voting. Well, now, wait a minute, gentlemen. Wait a minute. One at a time. Uh, but uh, we've come to tell you that something is wrong. Yeah, uh, we know that... we've been watching, and every night it happens. Every night at exactly the uh, same hold time. Hold on a minute. Suppose just one of you tell me this and begin at the beginning. <laughs> if it was me, you noticed it first. I was the one that called your extension. You see what I mean, Chief? Yes, I'm afraid that I do, Sergeant. Now, look here, men. I don't care which one of you tells me, but it stands to reason that unless one of you does, I can't help you. Now, suppose, uh, suppose you tell me just what it is that's bothering yeah, you. Uh, all right, I, I tell uh, uh, we, uh, Sven, here are my friends. We work in the bakery downtown all night, every night. We've been working there for a long time, and we have noticed something that is not right. Yes, yeah, so I've gathered. Uh, 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 every morning, exactly at 2 o'clock, we have seen a car drive away from the alley back of our bakery shop. Now, that may be all right, 
But a month ago, we got suspicious and started marking the calendar every night we saw it leave. And for that whole month, it was left the same time every night. Well, it does seem odd. But I can't see why it should be a police matter. Maybe it's some person who gets off work at that time. But it is from a Chinese grocery, and the grocery is not open at night. Oh, Chinese, huh? It is not right. I know it is not. Well, it what kind be... of a car is it? Did you notice? Yeah, it was a Packard, a big Packard oh, sedan. Good. I'm going to ask you fellows not to tell anyone that you've talked to me about this, and uh, don't mention what you've seen to anyone either. It may not be anything, but I have a hunch. Uh, Sergeant. Yes, sir? Get me Chief Walker of the State Narcotic Bureau in San Francisco on the phone. I want to talk to him. <laughs> Hello, uh, Chief Kane and San Rafael. Oh, hello, Kane. What's up? Well, I think I've stumbled onto a case for you, Chief. Looks like there's a bit of dope peddling and smoking going on up here. I haven't got anything definite for you, but uh, I thought you could look into it with me. Right. I'll have one of the boys go up right away. You can give him the details, and I'll check with you later. Well, thanks a lot. I'll be expecting him. This may be a wild goose chase. I can't be sure. Well, that's all right, Kane. Won't be the first wild goose chase we've been on in this department. <laughs> this one either. <laughs> right. Well, I'll send a man right away. Thanks, Steve. Goodbye. Goodbye. There's a Mexican fellow here to see you, Chief. He's outside. All right, Sergeant. Show him in. Probably a fruit picker on the warpath. You know, that's all I hear these days. Fruit picker's troubles. Yes, sir. Come in, please. Gracias, gracias. Thank you. You wanted to see me about something? Si, si, senor. A uh, matter that is personal. Oh. Well, you can go, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Now, what can I do for you? Inspector Noble of the State Narcotic Division, Chief. Well, I'll... <laughs> well, I didn't expect you so soon, Inspector, and I... Uh... Well, sit down, Noble. I'll give you all the information I have, which isn't a lot. However, there may be something to work on. There's a Chinese grocery over on C Street. Now, according to all outward signs, it closes at 6 o'clock every night. Everybody goes home and the place is dark. But a few days ago, some bakers came to me and told me about a mysterious car that left the back of the grocery every morning at 2 o'clock. They'd been doing a little amateur detective work and it made them suspicious. So they reported to me. You know the rest. I called Walker and he sent you. That's about all there is to it. Do you think there's a hop joint in operation there? Well, it occurred to me there might be. Well... That's not an awful lot to work on, but we'll see what we can do. I have a lead that may help you. One of the China boys that works over at the market is in jail here on a disturbance charge. Maybe you can get something out of him if he knows anything. Yeah, good, but how? Chinese won't talk to coppers. No. No, but if you want to do a little acting, we might get results just the same. How do you mean? Well, no one over here in town knows who you are, do they? Not a soul. All right, and here's the idea. Tonight, after it's dark, you get into the mall. <laughs> late tonight, aren't you, Chief? Yes, yes, I've got a little business here. I thought I'd finish up tonight, Sergeant. Too hot to sleep anyway. Yeah. I haven't been able to sleep lately, neither. I guess that's a trouble. Well, what the devil's all that noise? It sounds like somebody serenading the jail. If you could call that noise serenading. I'll see what is. Hey, lay off the music. Maybe you want to spend the night in jail, huh? No, 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 senor. <laughs> Only to sing is what I want. <laughs> to sing with happiness, mm. like a garage. All oh, right, that settles it. You're coming in to see the chief. Maybe he'll like your singing better than I do. Come on. But for why? <laughs> I am only happy and like drunk. a garage. You can't stay like home where you belong when you get canned up, then you stay in jail where you can't get into trouble. Come on. Come on in here. Well, no, you cannot do this to me. Where are you taking me like this? I don't want to go. I'm Here's our troubadour, chief. He says he wants to sing because he's so happy. I thought maybe you'd like to see him. Well, not any longer than I have to. Lock him up, Sergeant. Yes, sir. You, uh, you might throw him in with that Chinese we've got here. Maybe the two of them could sing a little duet or something, eh? Yes, sir. Come on, you. Uh, this, this country is not making sense. I am happy only. <laughs> oh, well, like a garage, like a garage.
Here you are, Fu Manchu. A little friend for you to talk to. Uh, no, no, no other talker. Uh, suit yourself. Here's a pal for you, nevertheless. Come on, you'll get in here and relax. Yes, 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 but do not push. I'm doing what you ask. Fine. Well, sleep tight. I'll see you in the morning when you sober up. Mm, tell them to better oh, to no, back. No, 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 sing it in here. Mm, do, not, do not worry. I do not feel like this singing now. Sick. Very sick. Oh, too bad. Uh, very much too bad, but uh, not in a third. Maybe you can help me. Oh, not uh, thinking, Joe. You, 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 you've got to. I need the smoke. Oh, no, not having any cigarettes. Uh, very sorry. No, I do not mean the tobacco. I mean, I mean the happy smoke. You understand? You're talking about uh, opium, uh, hops, and maybe, uh? See, si, see. Si. Si, that is what I must have. I got the tough happy... You're a stranger in this town? I just arrived today. While looking for the smoke, I got a little... Don't. Now I'm in the jail. Okay. Are you getting out uh, tomorrow, maybe? Yes, huh? yes, I, I guess so. Ah, uh, nice place, I know. Maybe you like to go there, huh? Maybe I can get this smoke. Uh, that is why. Tell me, tell me, please. Uh, let's start uh, a market on C Street. Very fine place business. Also, Chani Laundry on this place. Oh, both very nice place. Oh, God, this, God, this. You've been the greatest help to me. I will go there just so soon as I'm released. <laughs> After feigning sleep for a few hours in his jail cell, Inspector Norbo appears sober and calls for the sergeant. Now what do you want? I wish to see the chief again, please. I am sober now. I don't know how you can be. You were drunk enough when I put you in here. But I am sober now. You can see that. All right. Don't make sense, but then nothing ever does. Come on. I don't know why you fellas can't get drunk and stay that way. <laughs> Perhaps you will, Sergeant. Perhaps. I doubt it. I beg your pardon, Chief, but this fellow wants to see you. He says he's sober now. Oh, yes. Well, Chief, your suspicions were right. I got all we need. Oh, the China boy talk, eh? Plenty. Say, what is all this? <laughs> Sergeant, this is Inspector Norbo of the Narcotic Squad. What I, I just let this guy out of his cell. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, that all depends on how you look at it, Sergeant. In this case, it makes good sense. I wanted to talk to that Chinaman, and I didn't want it to be official. So you get thrown in with him, eh? And you weren't really drunk? <laughs> I'm afraid not. I guess I'm slipping. I'd have sworn on a stack of Bibles that you were on your last legs. Yeah, you're a good actor, Inspector. I was almost fooled myself. Now, uh, where do we go from here? Well, I go back to San Francisco and make my report. You'll hear from us within a day or so. In the meantime, you might get your Baker boys to continue their amateur sleuthing. Uh -huh. They might be able to help us again. I want definite proof of things before we raid. I'll wait for some word from you then, eh? Right. And it won't be long. This looks hot. Two days go by, and Chief Kane waits impatiently for word to go ahead with the case. And then, the morning of the third day, he finds two men waiting for him in his office. Chief Kane? Yes? I'm Inspector Blondo from the State Narcotic Bureau. Oh. This is Lieutenant Simpson, who's going to work with us. Well, well nice to see you, gentlemen. I'm anxious to crack this ring. Inspector Norborough turned over all the facts to me, and from what I gather, the first thing to do is to find out where that car goes after it leaves the joint every morning. You think it's the delivery car? Wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, it would help if we knew. All right, Inspector. Suppose we go out in my car tonight and tail it. We can dress in old clothes and probably never be noticed. Good. What time shall we start? Well, I'd say about 1.30 or thereabouts. If we spend too much time browsing around before they're ready to leave, we might make them suspicious. All right. Simpson and I will meet you here about 1 o'clock. Oh, uh, and wear old clothes, remember? <laughs> Don't worry. That's all I have anyway. See you later. Accordingly, a few minutes after 1 o'clock in the morning... Inspector Blonder, Lieutenant Simpson, and Chief Kane climb into Kane's private car and start for the Red Star Market on C Street. We've known for some time that there was a lot of junk being peddled around this district, but we couldn't put our finger on it. This is the first real lead we've had. Uh, you can thank those four beggars for the original tip. At one time, when amateur detecting did more good than harm. Most people manage to bungle things up rather than help when they try to help us. It's a relief to find a case that's different. What time is it? Nearly 1.45. We 
should hit it just about right with any degree of luck. Well, so far we have nothing to complain about. Luck seems to be with us. Yeah, so far. Well, here we are. The alley goes right back of these buildings here. How are we going to watch the alley without looking obvious? Well, if this mystery car keeps to its schedule, we won't have to watch for it. It leaves at exactly 2 o'clock on the nose, according to the bakers. Now, all we have to do is drive by the mouth of the alley a couple of times, and if all is as it should be, we'll spot our suspect as he starts to leave. Then... All we have to do is watch without being watched. That's right. Just like that. You sound a little skeptical, Simpson. Oh, no, nothing like that. Just thinking out loud, that's all. Hey, take a look as we pass the alley now and see if you can spot the car. It should be parked about halfway down. Right. Yeah, there's a car, all right. It looks as though it's the one you described, a big sedan. See anybody around it? No. There's some lights in the building across from it, though. Yeah, that's the bakery. I guess our sleuths are still at work, eh? It's a nice night for that sort of thing. You can't see over the end of your nose. No moon, no lights, no nothing. Mm, could be a lot worse. You haven't forgotten the night we tailed those boys through the fog, have you? This is a cinch alongside of that. It's still dark. And according to my watch, it's just about two. We'll cruise by slower this time and keep your eyes glued to the car. Right. Here we are. Drive on. It's coming out of the alley right now. Okay. But if it turns the other way, we'll have to take a chance on a fast turn. Otherwise, we'll let it pass us. Well, it looks holding. It's coming this way and fast, too. Good. Yeah. Now we'll see what he's up to. He's certainly in a hurry, wherever he's in. Yeah. Hope my old buzz will hold together. Watch it, he's slowing down. Looks like he's throwing something out of the car. He may be wise to us. Wait till he goes on, we'll see what he don't. Look, there's someone running out to pick it up. You're right, Simpson. There, he's got it, and he's running back into the shadows. Shall we stop and try to pick him up or follow the car? Might as well follow the car. That fellow's gone. Okay. Three different times, the mystery car slows drops the package, which is picked up immediately, then continues on its way. And each time, the unknown persons are gone when the three men arrive at the scene. At last, the black sedan returns to the starting point, darts up the alley to the rear of the Red Star Market. Satisfied that the evening's nocturnal journey is finished, Chief Kane and his two companions return to headquarters to discuss the situation. Well, gentlemen, I don't know whether we accomplished anything or not, but at least you got a nice view of our city. Oh, a little more than that, I think. There's no doubt in my mind now but what we're on the right track. That fellow we followed proved that for us. Uh, you think he was delivering dope? I'm sure of it. Too bad we couldn't have caught him with some of the stuff on him. I don't think so, Simpson. We don't want to come out in the open until our plans are complete. If we'd knocked this bird over tonight, there wouldn't have been a trace of dope in the entire city by tomorrow night. Well, I hope he didn't catch on that we were telling him. I don't think he did. However, we've got to work fast just Say, in case. Hey, I've got an idea. It's only a hunch, but it might be a good one. Shoot. Well, next week's a fireman's dance, and all the boys on the force are planning to go. Now, the natural supposition would be that that of all times... That night would be the least likely for a raid. So we pull a fast one and catch them off guard. Good enough, Chief. I'll let all the boys go, but uh, tell them to take their guns with them and stand by for orders. Then when things are going well, we'll sneak out and pull the raid, huh? For the ensuing week, Kane, Norbo, and Simpson spend endless hours laying a careful plan of attack. And at last, on February 21st, the chief called his men together. Well, boys, tonight's the fireman's dance. I suppose you're all planning to go? Yes, sir. Yeah, wouldn't yeah, miss it for anything. Good. I want you to go out and have a good time. Now, there's one thing that I'm going to ask that may seem a little out of the ordinary to you, but it's necessary. I want all of you to wear your guns. Wear our guns to a dance? Right. Right. I know it sounds funny, but that's it. And I don't want any of you to leave the dance until I've checked with you. There may be a little excitement. What's up, chief? Yeah. Frank, yeah. I'm sorry, boys. I can't tell you any more than that just now. Wear your guns and stand ready for action. If everything goes right, you'll all know the answer before the night's over. Oh, and one more thing. I don't want you to mention these orders to anyone, not even your wives. Uh, a lot depends on tonight, and secrecy is the keynote to our success. Well, uh, I don't know what it's all about, but uh, I can see where I'm going to have trouble with my wife. <laughs> she has a way of knowing things, and when she puts the heat on me... <laughs> Well, it's sure going to be hard to keep quiet. <laughs> well, I'm in the same boat, boys. My wife doesn't know anything about this either. But that's the way it's got to be. So just go to the dance, have a good time, and wait for developments. That's all. Okay, all Chief. Right. Hope you can make it. Oh, here you are, Chief. 
Chief. I've been looking all over the place for you. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Yeah, quite a mob, all right. I was afraid you might get lost in it. That's a good band, Chief Kane. I could almost do a bit of dancing myself if I had a partner. <laughs> well, maybe I can arrange that for you, Simpson. There's a lot of lovely women here. Yeah, I noticed. I think I'm going to like this party. Everything set for tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I had a little talk with the boys this afternoon. They can't figure out what's happening, but they're all for it if it means excitement. I've got a great bunch of men here, Inspector. Good. We'll get plenty of excitement, if I'm not very wrong. <laughs> I've knocked over quite a few dope joints, and you can be pretty certain of a bit of trouble. Well, I hope we're able to surprise them enough so there won't be too much. I don't fancy the way Chinamen fight. They aren't civilized, if you ask me. I almost got chopped down by one once. He missed my head about a half inch with a chopper the size of a horse. I've never trusted a Chinaman since. Well, it's nine now. That gives us about an hour to kill, according to plan. I'd say we sort of relax and enjoy ourselves. Good idea, Inspector. Come on with me and I'll see what I can do about finding Simpson, a leader, leading lady for a dancing partner, huh? <laughs> I might even find one for you, if you wouldn't mind. Mine? Far from it. Come on, Simpson. Shall we join the ladies? Yeah. What time do you make it, Chief? About a quarter to ten. Already, I guess. Right. Oh, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'm going to my office. As soon as I've left, get word to all the men to report to me there at once. Tell them to leave quietly and to hurry. Yes. Come on, Blonda. We're on our way. Within 15 minutes, every member of the San Rafael Police Force reports at headquarters, ready for duty. After carefully explaining to them the plans, Chief Kane signs one party in charge of Sergeant McLaughlin to attack the rear door of the market, another led by Inspector Blonda to the front door, and he himself heads the third party. Final instructions given, the three squads set out in different cars for the destination, the Red Star Market. And a few minutes later, with lights out and engine idling, the chief's car rolls to a stop a short ways from the alley, running behind the market. Shut out the motor, Mino. There's Blonda's car down the street. Yeah, the other one just stopped over there, too. Good. All right, boys, come on with me and be quiet. We've got to get inside before those Chinamen get wise, or they'll get rid of everything. All right. Keep in the shadow of the building here. We can't be seen if we keep close in. All set, Chief. Good. I told McLaughlin to start breaking down the back door when I flashed a light. He's waiting at the mouth of the alley where he can see it. You ready to go? All set. And here goes. As soon as we hear the boys at the back, we'll bust through the front door here. Right. McLaughlin's got the signal. He started up the alley. All right. On your toes, boys. We're ready. Quiet. All right, boys. Let's go. Through this door here. Hey! Well, that Chinaman went through that door up there. That must be where we want to be. Guns in hand, boys. You can't tell what we're running into here. Come on. That's the room, all right. Listen to him yelling in there. Yeah, the door is locked. Have to bust it down. Come on. Bring it down. Look out, Peter. Let's go. I see him. Put it on. I'll get him. Kick up me in the arm. Hey, you're lucky you didn't get your worst. Stay where you are, all of you. I'll shoot the first one that tries to run out. Sounds like Anson's got things under control in the next room. Come on, Blonda. Here you are, Chief. A nice bunch of human wrecks. Some of them are asleep. Well, will you look at that, Inspector? Whites, Chinese, all in the same bunch. Hop to the eyelids. Well, dope addicts draw no social lines, Chief. They're like a bunch of cattle. Yeah, we caught a bunch of Chinamen out in the alley, Chief. They started pouring out like rats from a sinking ship. We nabbed them as they came. Good work, Sergeant. Get a couple of the boys and round this bunch up. Take them over to the jail and lock them up. They can't walk, carry them. Yes, sir. Come on, you. This way out and behave yourself. Well, Inspector, so far, so good. Now, all we've got to do is repeat this over at the Chinese laundry, and the evening will be a success. Leaving enough men to take care of the prisoners, Chief Kane leads his raiding party to the Chinese laundry on D Street. But this time, things are not quite as smooth. Or as they enter the front door... They've pulled the main fuse. The lights have gone out. Throw on your flash, Simpson. Hey, you uh... ah, This is bad. No telling what we might run into in this dock. Well, we'll just have to ease our way along. I don't hear any signs of life. Well, there's plenty here. Probably huddled in a room somewhere. Hey, I just saw someone go through a door up ahead there. Come on, boys. They're up ahead here. There's one getting through that window. That's got him. See if you can find the light, Sergeant. I think there's another door somewhere. Probably a secret passage. There are plenty of people in here when we arrived, and now they're all gone. Here we are, Chief. This panel here. It didn't close. Oh, way. yeah. Throw some light down there, Simpson. All right. Holy Moses, will you look at that? Hey. Oh, come on, let's find out where it goes. Come on. Easy now. There's a door ahead. Yeah, 
light coming out through a crack at the bottom. I guess they think they're safe down there. Well, we'll give them another thought. Ready with your guns, boys. If they start anything when we get there, let them have it. Don't take any chances. All okay. right. All right, let's go. Stand where you are, all of you. Quite a layout, eh, Inspector? One of the biggest I've ever seen. There's enough junk here to supply a small community. This has been a good night's work. <laughs> a very good night's work. Yes. Oh, by the way, what time is it? 12.30. 12.30? Oh, well, I'll say that's too bad. Huh? What do you mean, too bad? Well, I told the boys we'd be through in time for them to go back to the dance, but it stopped at 12. Say, this is too bad. As a result of the two raids, over $13,000 worth of opium, 24 pipes, and the entire gang of dope peddlers were taken. One of the most successful raids in the history of the state narcotic department. News. Don't miss the latest issue of the Calling All Cars News. Even if you've never been in a Rio Grande station before, by all means, drop in tonight or tomorrow and get your free copy of this unique, fascinating publication. Read the illustrated stories of the crimes you hear on Calling All Cars. Read about the 14 free gifts that Rio Grande offers every boy and girl. You can help some youngster get a complete junior detective outfit free if you will merely use Rio Grande cracked gasoline. We are confident that after a few hundred miles of police car performance, you will never be satisfied to go back to ordinary gasoline. Why don't you try a tank full and see for yourself why Rio Grande cracked is preferred above all other brands by the largest cities and counties in the West for their police cars, fire engines, and other emergency equipment. You'll notice that all Rio Grande dealers are now featuring Sinclair motor oil. You hear a lot of claims for many new oils, but you'll find that Sinclair Motor Oil has all the advantages claimed for other oils and several exclusive features besides. Your Rio Grande cracked gasoline dealer also offers you the best motor oil value on this market, Sinclair. Fell police calling all cars. Attention all cars. A cancellation broadcast 141. Suspects in this case now in custody. That's all. narrator, Frederick Lindsley, 